Welcome back to Movies TV Mad. You can follow me on Twitter at Movies TV Mad. And a very warm welcome, everyone, to Thursday's edition of the DC Universe Daily on today's show with Matt Reeves confirming that he and his writing partner are hard at work on the Batman sequel and saying that the sequel and the Penguin spin-off are just the tip of the iceberg for huge plans for his Batverse universe. We discuss Matt Reeves on today's show, the kind of storyteller, writer and filmmaker he actually is and his plans. And with him having such ambitious plans for his Batverse, what is the viability of James Gunn having another Batman in DC Universe? We're going to discuss all of that on today's show. So Matt Reeves has confirmed that he and his writing partner are hard at work writing the Batman sequel. This is what he told us he was doing last year as well. So first of all, I think there's no question about that, that we're not going to see the Batman sequel to at least 2025. It's not viable. They're still writing the movie. Have they done any casting yet? Um, are they ready to start shooting? It doesn't look like it. They may not start shooting this movie till mid-2023 to end of 2023. And so, you know, there's going to be no The Batman in 2024. So we were actually promised by uh, his writing, writing partner that kind of guarantees of the movie being released in 2024 and we wouldn't have to wait till 2025. Well, that's interesting. I just don't understand how that's viable. Now, Matt Reeves is a notorious slow worker. He works in a snail's pace. And it, it, this is what happened with the Batman and the studio tried to hurry him up a little bit, but you've got to be very, very careful with this guy. You really don't want to upset him because he's already brought you in $750 million for the first Batman. This is a Batman movie with hardly any action, and the audience sat there and went back and watched it again and again and again. The Batman is a very, very different type of comic book movie. As I say, with hardly any action or any explosions in it, people sat down and were mesmerized by the film, as was I. This is the Batman meets the Godfather. You have a very, very faithful Batman to the origins. He's intelligent. He's a detective. He's working with really his investigative partner, Commissioner Jim Golden, in trying to work out what Riddler's up to here and trying to stop him using their intellect. This is what Batman used to be in the early panels of the comics and graphic novels. It's only later on within the comics, animation, and, you know, directors like Tim Burton's movies and Christopher Nolan's movies, where Batman had a lot of explosions, fighting choreography, and action. The Batman doesn't have that. It's totally story-based, and it's character dynamic-based. Matt Reeves is a very old-fashioned type of storyteller. And as I just said, he likes to take his time with what he's doing. So you're going to have a long wait till you see this Batman sequel, but I'm quite sure it will be worth it in the end. So, yeah, this is the way this guy works. So I wouldn't expect too much more action in the sequel or the Penguin or the Arkham spin-off series or whatever else they're planning. This is not how Matt Reeves tells his stories. As I say, you know, he's like... A Coppola. He's like that. I mean, I joke about James Gunn thinking he's Francis Ford Coppola, and I notice all the MCU fans are after Francis right now, with rumours about him fil his film having problems, but don't worry about Francis Ford Coppola. He's going to make a fantastic movie and sit you all down. I would absolutely love to see an MCU director attempt to do Apocalypse Now. Never going to happen, right? Anyway, back on point. So Matt Reeves is a very old-fashioned type of director and storyteller. It's not about the action for him. It's about the story. And this is exactly what we got in the first Batman movie. Now, some Batman fans and stands were very critical with the lack of action. We had the same criticism of Superman Returns 
because Superman Returns is based on its story rather than its action. I would say it's more problematic to not have much action in a Superman movie. I don't think it's as problematic in a Batman movie. I don't think it's problematic at all because Matt Reeves kind of entertains you and compels you via his storytelling and character dynamics. With Superman, you know, one of the elements of the character is his gee whiz quality. You want to see him flying, you want to see him beating criminals up and things like that. It's part of the fun. But Brian Singer was trying to tell a story about someone who had been away for five years and trying to, you know, try and remake him relevant in the world today. But I think there are some Batman fans who have issues with the lack of action in the first Batman movie. If I were you, I would get used to it. And if you don't like it, go and watch BVS, which is plenty of action, and Batman 89 and Batman 92, and Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy. This is not what Matt Reeves is going to do. This is not how Matt Reeves tells his stories. Now, I'm very, very excited about Matt, what Matt Reeves is teasing us about, you know, that he's working on this Batman sequel. And apparently, the Penguin, you know, the story of the Penguin will be linked in with the Batman sequel as well. So that's very, very exciting. So I'm assuming, because I think, that, no, I don't think I know, they're actually starting to shoot the Penguin right now as we speak, if not soon. So we're going to see the Penguin, it's obvious, before the Batman sequel. So I believe, and the way Matt is talking, this is the way it's going to play out, that the Penguin, the Penguin spin-off, which is also kind of a sequel of the Batman, will also set up the Batman sequel. So Matt Reeves is creating a very interesting, concise franchise here. But it's not a DC franchise, it's a Batman franchise. Of course, Batman is part of the DC universe. I'm not saying that, that he's not. But I don't expect to see Matt, you know, throw Superman in and that one in and the other one in. This is about Batman's well. He's telling a proper, concise story about Batman's well. But who knows? We may see some grade Z or Y DC characters going forward. You never know. But it doesn't look like Matt Reeves is that type of a storyteller. And there's no need for him to do any of that because James Gunn will be doing that within DC Universe. So Matt Reeves is telling his own Batman story. The first film is near three hours long. A three hour movie with hardly any action or punch ups. It's a first for Batman, but it absolutely worked for what, Bat for what Matt Reeves was trying to do. Some people, some fans think that Matt Reeves is actually Batman. I literally called him Batman by mistake. Now, the Snyder fans were saying that they went to see the movie and they fell asleep. Now, they're angry with Matt Reeves and his movie because that movie was supposed to be Ben Affleck's, the Batman movie originally. So they have an axe to grind. So what those people have to say about that has no sense. There's a bias towards it. So, look, I can understand why a Snyder fan, after the way Snyder made Batman vs. Superman, with all that action and explosions and all that imagery, why maybe they would be bored with the Batman. I didn't find the Batman boring. It didn't bother me that the movie didn't have any action. And as I said earlier, um, just because, you know, just because the film is very talky and very story-based and based in character dynamics, it doesn't make it boring. But today's Gen Z audience have grown up on CGI and explosions. There's no story in that. It's just garnish to get you through two, two and a half hours. Isn't that really what Avengers Endgame is? A three hour movie that could have easily been a 90 minute movie, but basically they dragged it out to create an event. Now the Snyder Cut doesn't feel like, oh, you know, it's a four hour movie. I could have done without that. In fact, the four hours seems like a two hours to me. So it was great. Now there's nothing wrong with having high concepted action and explosions in a Batman movie. So Matt Reeves really created a cultural shock moment for comic book movies. He proved you can get rid of the action and the punch-ups mostly 
and just have a concise story in your comic book movie. And if it's a good movie and a good story, people will come in again and again. And it's a really good story. This is a Bruce Wayne who's been around for a year or so. He's still very depressed. He's very upset. We see his eye makeup. It's, it's a different type of depiction. That's something we've never seen in Batman again. And it's always cool to see stuff that you imagine. We always knew that he'd had the eye makeup there, but we never saw it. And that's okay. But Matt did it. But this is a brooding Batman who believes the best way to project to protect Gotham is through vengeance and not justice. He sees them as the same thing. And it's only in the end when one of the Riddler's goons says, your vengeance, we did this because of you. And that's when he has that massive, you know, reconcile that, you know, kind of moment, that re reconciliation in his mind. You know, he realizes he's been inspiring people in the wrong way. That's when he dives down into the river and starts being a hero for the people. And that's why he's diving down. Do you get it? Because he's going on the same level as the people where before he's been looking down at Gotham. And this is a brilliant way to tell a story. And so that's the first act of Matt Reeves, The Batverse. So I can't wait to see what Matt's gonna do here. And I'm very excited about this way of telling a story. Now, James Gunn has told us that in his DC Universe, Batman will be front and center and very important to what's going on. Now, do we need a DC Universe Batman and a Matt Reeves Batman? Now, there were a lot of rumors that James Gunn and Matt Reeves had, had discussions about using um, Matt's Batman and Matt's Universe in DC Universe, something that's been shot down by James Gunn. So we, we'll make the assumption that James is telling the truth here, that Matt's Batman Universe and James's Batman Universe will be separate. But do we need a Batman in DC Universe if we've got this huge Batverse going on already? Well, here's the thing. If you've got a DC Universe, you do kind of need a Batman in it. But we could get overdosed with too much Batman. Now, clearly, James' version of Batman is going to be hugely different to what Matt Reeves did in the first movie and beyond. But Matt Reeves isn't just doing a trilogy here. He's talking, he's teasing a huge Batverse. He's not talking trilogy here. Now, there may be only three Batman movies planned. I don't know. And maybe they'll be surrounded by spin-offs until he completes those three movies. And don't forget, because he works in this snail's pace, he's going to be many, many years doing this. So clearly we're going to have a lot of spin-offs on HBO Max before we get done with his trilogy. But it may be more than a trilogy. I've never actually heard Matt say he's only making a trilogy. But maybe I've just missed that moment in an interview or a tweet where he said that. But I've never seen that. So Matt Reeves, the Batman universe, is going to be around for the foreseeable future. So with that said, even though you do want Batman, a Batman in DC Universe, you know, is it overkill? Is it overkill to have a Batman here and a Batman there? Um, it's Look, I think it's a problem. I think it's really problematic. Now, taking Batman away from DC Universe is also problematic. The, the point is that everyone's kind of stuck with each other at this point. Because the Batman made really good money releasing in a March during a pandemic. You know, the pandemic, no, we're not in a pandemic anymore. Like, COVID is a thing, but it's not a pandemic. Not in America, not in Europe. It's not a pandemic anymore. It's as simple as that. And go and, you know, go and research yourselves. Google the meaning of a pandemic. So they keep on talking about pre-pandemic box office to kind of upscale box offices today. But Matt Reeves, the Batman, was being released still when people were wary to go back into the cinema. People say Top Gun Maverick was the one that brought people back to cinemas. In a lot of ways, it did in a large scale, but so did Matt Reeves, the Batman. As I said, they sat there watching a film which is very interesting 
in its noir genere with very little action or fisty cuss as we used to call it when we were kids you know not much fighting or action choreography in the movie there's an okay batmobile chase i think it's a really cool batmobile chase but it's a really brief one so i believe look matt can do action but that's not how he tells his stories as i said earlier he is a very old-fashioned type of storyteller so if you enjoyed the first movie you can enjoy arkham the penguin which is pretty much the, the real sequel to his first movie and it's the bridge between the batman and the sequel and we've still got arkham to come and as matt has teased we've got a lot more to come after that so there's a lot to look forward to in matt reeves batverse but the question still remains with such a huge deep dive into batman as such as matt is doing do we need another batman in dc universe well we're going to get another batman so yes i'm hyped and excited for what matt reeves is going to do and i'll be looking forward to all the updates as matt gets ready to shoot that movie but right now they're still writing that movie you know he's he was in an interview he answered some questions some people asked him about what characters he could be using he said yes or no he kind of bluffed a lot of questions saying i'm not going to say i am doing that but i'm not going to say i'm not doing that so we don't really know who the villain or villains will be in the batman sequel now i've always said that he's going to have a multitude of villains and this could actually be an arkham style movie which would be really exciting as well but it is going to continue from what happened at the end of the movie there was a flood they are all kind of trapped in gotham you know and we have to ask the question do we get a catwoman spin-off um does she eventually return from bloodhaven will she pick up the mantle from what her father falcone left off there is a potential of her being the head of the crime family in the batman sequel and wouldn't that be the very interesting thing to do i loved ray's version of selena kyle and catwoman and they took a really really deep dive with her as well so it was a really well made well written well directed story but if you're only interested in garnish cgi and explosions matt reeves the batman universe is the wrong place for you and just watch another batman universe that has a lot of explosions now moving on from matt reeves very exciting statements about the future of the batverse i want to ask a question what is the structure of dc universe now i've touched on this before that from the outside looking in it just looks like the only employees there are matt reeves and peter saffron there doesn't really seem to be a structure in place and i'm very cynical the only reason we have something called dc studios was because us the fans were demanding it well marvel have got their own studio why don't we and here's the thing after a month or so of this thing being up there or a few months now um you know with Mar with, with marvel studios you can you can you can go and see who works where at marvel studios you know who is the president of marvel studios kevin Feig, and basically you've got victoria alonso there and you've got lots of different people but basically dc studios doesn't seem to have a list of a structure or employees you know there's you know there's nothing that we you know there's nothing there as you know from what i can see there's only two people working there so is dc studios just the front of nothing um, well, it could well be because until they start announcing people who are going to be working there, you know, it, to me, it just seems a bit of a sham to me. It doesn't mean what James Gunn is doing isn't going to work. But the thing is, as I say, Marvel Studios is a proper functioning studio. And for me, when I look at DC Studios, it doesn't seem to have any evidence that the, it, it is a proper functioning studio. And so if you ask me, Mick, what is the structure of that studio? I don't know. You know, so, um, yeah. Sorry about that. I just had a delivery from Amazon. So where was I? Yeah. So, yeah, DC Studios doesn't seem to have much of a structure, but they're also not very transparent about the kind of structure they operate from. 
Here's the truth of the situation. It was Toby Emmerich and Walter Hamada who brought in James Gunn and Green Lit, the Suicide Squad. It was Toby Emmerich and Walter Hamada who brought in Peter Saffron to produce DC movies under the, the trademark of his production company. So, nothing has actually changed at DC. I'm going to allege here and today that Walter Hamada and Toby Emmerich are still behind the scenes pulling all of the strings, and James Gunn is just a friendly, nicey little distraction. It doesn't mean he hasn't got good plans for us. Once he starts announcing things, we'll see if the plans are any good. But that, that's the truth of the matter, everyone, that, you know, Walter Hamada and uh, Toby Emmerich were the ones who brought these guys in. So, is it new leadership? Is it more of the same? Is it, you know, I don't think anything's changed over at WB and DC. But we will find out what's going on when they start making announcements. They didn't want Henry Cavill as Superman, you know, and they've now found a way to remove Henry Cavill as Superman. How did they do it? In a very slick way. They got James Gunn to claim it was his idea to remove Henry Cavill. James Gunn, a very popular writer-director. If James Gunn says, I'm removing Henry Cavill as Superman because I want to cast a younger Superman, most of the general audience and sycophants are going to swallow it. Now, a lot of intelligent people, a lot of people who supported Henry Cavill and the Snyderverse are very angry. Now, if it wasn't for them removing Henry Cavill as Superman, then the sell the Snyderverse to Netflix hashtag wouldn't have started. So like Warner Brothers, if they don't want this to happen, have kind of reinvigorated the Snyderverse fandom to go and find something else to fight for. It's still the Snyderverse, it's just a different way of doing it. So if they don't want the Snyderverse to see the light of day, they're just, they've got a funny way of going about it. Because now they've re-energised the Snyder fans to keep on fighting to restore the Snyderverse. Now if Henry stayed as Superman, as they stated they wanted to do just, you know, a few months ago, there would be no campaign, Netflix campaign, for, you know, to broadcast and produce more Snyderverse content. There would be no Restore the Snyderverse hashtag gaining momentum yet again. Henry would be back and that would have been enough ultimately for everyone. But again, they've shot themselves in the foot. Now this could be a really good thing for WB if the miracle happens and Snyderverse ends up over at Netflix because they could make a lot of money. They will make a lot of money. There is money in the Snyderverse. It may not be a billion, two billion dollars a picture in cinema screens and movie theatres, but there's money to be made via distribution deals. The Snyderverse is a ready-made platform with, you know, with lots of fans, with support behind the franchise. So this could end up really well for um, DC Studios and uh, David Zaslav. But at the moment, it's just a pipe dream some of us DC and Snyder enthusiasts are fighting for and we'll see uh, if anything comes of it but next month there's a huge trending event and I will be absolutely behind it and I'll be boring on about it all the time on this channel because I think it's important I do think it's ma it matters I do think if you can have a Matt Reeves Batverse and you can have a Batman in DC Universe what and you can have another Bruce Wayne in the Jokerverse why can't you have the Snyderverse over at Netflix if you're gonna do that you might as well do this because I do feel they're going with this multiverse strategy. Something that was already in place as well. So, you know, they were already going to do this multiverse thing. And to me, it's my theory, I feel they're still going to do this multiverse strategy. But maybe just slightly differently wrapped up, differently garnished, but basically... When James Gunn announces his plans, it could end up just being the same thing that Walter Hamada was doing, just rewrapped in a different package. Now, I'm a very alert, intelligent person, so if that's the way I see it, 
That's exactly how I'm going to tell you I see it. Now, if I see it as something bold and new and exciting and totally different to what Walter was going to do, I'll say, wow, yes, James Gunn, you're going in a new, exciting direction. But I believe this is just garnish to make it look like we're going to a new, slick, well-done DC universe. And really, it's just the same old shit as before. But I'm not going to say that until James starts unveiling his plans. And once he does, we can discuss it here on Movies TV Mad. So it's, it's a very exciting time to be a DC fan, but it's also a very troubling time to be a DC fan. But... I'm excited for the Batverse from Matt Reeves. He's a very proficient, very good director who is going to give you storytelling and character dynamics. He's creating a kind of Batman Godfather universe. Because after all, isn't that what the rogues gallery has been in a kind of way in the comics and graphic novels? And this is the kind of treatment that Matt Reeves is going to give them. The rogues gallery is probably the greatest assortment of villains in fiction and, you know, and, you know, in narrative history. They're so good. They're so diverse. They're so not good as in good, good as in entertaining. They're obviously bad people because they're fucking villains. But even as a kid watching the old 60s TV show and I'm thinking, wow, these characters that Batman's got, they're so good. Now, Batman, now, Superman has got an interesting rogues gallery. It's just not been depicted enough in live action. So most people say, oh, Batman's got this great rogues gallery, but Superman hasn't. Superman hasn't just got Lex Luthor and Doomsday to fight. There's a lot of others as well. There's Brainiac. There's lots of interesting ones, right? There's lots of ones that haven't been used before much in live action. They always go back to Lex Luthor because Lex Luthor is cheaper to shoot. Now, Man of Steel used General Zod again, but what was great about General Zod, he was a very different Zod to what we saw in Superman 2. He wasn't going with this, no, before Zod, which was great when I was watching it as a kid, but you couldn't do it again. Because, you know, I, th I think in the 21st century, having a villain just screaming, no, before Zod, isn't very exciting, and people want to see their villains have meaning. And Zod in Man of Steel has a lot of meaning. To some people, maybe Zod isn't a villain at all. Is someone who's trying to save his own society by crushing another society a villain? I suppose they are really, aren't they? Um, it, it, you know, and you see it all the time. You see it in the real world. You see the Israel-Palestine affair. And you see it in across the world, you know, trying to uphold one society by harming another. And, you know, we see it in the real world and they do it beautifully in Man of Steel, but Superman has a great rose gallery as well, as does Batman. I want James Gunn's DC Universe to be a brave, bold, exciting new turn of events for DC. We've been screaming for an interconnected franchise for a long time. It is exciting to have that, but then have Matt Reeves the Batverse and have Todd Phillips Jokerverse, and who knows what else they're going to do. I'm, I'm down with that, having a multiverse that actually works. But multiverses are very difficult in live action. As a kid, reading about the DC multiverse was very, very exciting. I was thinking, oh my God, parallel universes, you know, Earth 1s, Earth 2s. Some found that confusing. I found that very exciting. But it's one thing to read about the multiverse. It's another one to see it in live action. Is a multiverse concept as exciting in live action as it is in comic form. You know, you know, everything, everywhere, all at once did it in a really good way. Back to the Future 2 also had Marty McFly, you know, change his present. Basically, they did Flashpoint before Flashpoint did Flashpoint. They did it successfully in live action. And we're going to have to wait and see when, and when I finally see the finished um, Flash movie to see if, you know, if a multiverse story in live action works. Now, in a way, we've already seen it in Spider-Man No Way Home. And that worked in a really, br in a broader sense, but it didn't focus on the multiverse. Now, uh, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness did it differently. Did they succeed? A lot of people say no, but I think that's because most of you MCU stands were disappointed with the lack of cameos. 
I actually like Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. It's one of the films I prefer from Phase 4. And like most of you, I'm not a huge fan of Phase 4, but I thought it was an, at least an okay movie. So the multiverse is very difficult to pull off in live action. But that's, that's what I think DC's future is. It's the multiverse. It's one Earth with Matt Reeves. It's another Earth with Todd Phillips. It's another Earth with um, James Gunn. James Gunn may even involve more than one Earth in his DC universe. And the time is coming soon where James is going to have to tell us what he's planning. And when that day comes, we will be going live and we'll be getting very excited, excited. And, you know, we'll be getting our teeth into it. And I can't wait. This has been Thursday's DC Universe Daily with me, Mick, your host with the most. Just ask your girlfriends and your wives. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you never miss this beautiful perfection. And I'll see you again in the next video. Until I see you again, goodbye. Au revoir. Auf Wiedersehen.